is Nick Vujicic, and um, as you can see, I have no arms and no legs. And we know that God is a great God. We know that God is love. But the question that I had in my life, now 24, understanding the love of God in my life, when I was a child, I didn't understand His love for me. For if God loves me, then why does He let me go through pain? Why does He not change our circumstance? And we all have a cross to bear. We all have something to carry. We all have a circumstance. But I want to share with you how we can have victory in Christ's grace and perfection for you and I today. Before I get into my story, I uh, want to open up with a couple of funny things that have happened in my life. Obviously, having no arms and no legs, a lot of people look at me and maybe stare at me, and especially kids, it's really funny. There was uh, you know, this one little boy who saw me one day and he goes, What happened? And I went up to him and I go, Cigarettes. And... Uh, <laughs> We love freaking people out. Uh, in our trip in Indonesia, my camera crew put me up in the overhead compartment of an airplane. We closed the door and waited for somebody to put the bag up there. This guy came and go, boo! You know, freaked him out. It's quite funny. But the funniest story I can tell you was uh, one day I was in a car and from the outside of the car, you have no idea when you see me that I have no arms and no legs. And we're at the traffic lights one day and this car comes up next to us and this girl's looking at me and I'm like, cool, let's have some fun here. So I look at her and I, I grab the seatbelt in my mouth and I loosen it like this. And then in the car seat, I just did this. <laughs> and she was like, I don't think I've seen anybody so desperate for a green light in my life. Well, basically, the, the whole book, it's just amazing. But I want to focus on verse 4 at first of chapter 4 in Philippians. And it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That he doesn't let anything happen without a reason. In Romans 8.28, it says, All things come together for the good for those who love him. Even the worst part of your life, God can use for good. How do I know that? Well, first of all, the Bible says so. And second of all, I see it now. I see the good. You've seen the real pain in my life that I probably went through, and you maybe have that in your mind. Nick must have gone through a lot of struggles. Yes. But did I see now the purpose of it? Yes. Did I see it when I was a child? No. Did my parents see the good in their son being born without arms and legs at first? No. But just because you can't see the purpose yet, it doesn't mean it's not coming. You don't go to a train station, look down the railway and say, no, the train's not here, I'm leaving. No, you wait for the train because the schedule says it's going to come. Well, you wait for the purpose and the good because guess who says it's going to come? God. Do you think that God is reliable? Yes. He never fails. And just because you can't understand it, it doesn't mean it's not there or it's not coming. And even though we are encouraged and urged to trust in God, trust itself, I believe, is a decision. You see, if I have a broken car, this uh, wheelchair of mine, right? Let's just pretend this is a BMW 7 Series, right? We're going to get like spinning rims on this thing, take it to pit my ride and get this thing, bom, bom, bom. you know, it'd be quite funny. <laughs> but imagine that, you know, my BMW, you know, is, let's say, broken on the freeway, right? Now, the person who's driving the broken car, you know, it doesn't pull to the side of the freeway and jump on the roof and say, hallelujah, praise God. First of all, he's not going to be, or she's not going to be rejoicing about it. But... What do you do with a broken car? What do you do with that circumstance? You take it to somebody who can take care of it, fix it. So do you think that you need faith to take a car to a mechanic? No. You just know who the mechanic is, know what they do, and then you make that decision to trust the mechanic. So then by hearing of the word, we know who God is and what God can do, so then we make a decision to trust in God. It's hard, though, to trust. But don't you see, this is where the victory lies. 
This is when we are transformed, when we invite God into our life, that we become more than conquerors. What does that mean? That my circumstance is not going to conquer me. In fact, I don't even need to worry about not having arms and legs. I already have victory. Why? Because I trust in God's grace. I trust in God's perfection when He says no. See, I can't guarantee you this morning that God is going to change every single circumstance because He didn't change mine. But I'm here today to tell you this, that if He doesn't choose to change your circumstance, don't let the enemy steal your joy. Don't let those lies tell you, well then God surely doesn't have a plan for you. God definitely made a mistake. God does not have the capacity to leave you, to forget you. How do you let that peace of God guard your heart when you say, Jesus, here I am today. I've tried and I've tried to do it on my own strength, but I'm tired and I'm exhausted and this circumstance is bigger than me. And when you say, Lord, come into my life, give me your strength, give me your peace. And he will come into your heart when you call upon him. And you see this. This smile is real. This victory is real. And the God I serve is awesome. And life is such that sometimes you fall down and you cannot get up. Let me just explain to you. Let's say that there's the Bible and I want to go to the Bible. Now, if I want to touch the Bible, the Bible's not going to come to me. I've got to go to it. Okay? How do I go to it? It's not like I'm going to start levitating and going hum, right? And it's like, woo. Right, that's not going to happen. But you take one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. But there are circumstances that push you, that cause you to fall and stumble. Now, to illustrate my point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off the table, do a back twist, and land on the floor. Okay, is that cool? I'll try not to break my arm. All right, here we go. Ready? One. Are you ready? No? Just let me know when you're ready. All right, ready? One. Two, I'm joking, man. <laughs> if I did that, I'd seriously sprain my ankle. All right. But let's say along the way you might fall down like this. Ready? Hello. So what do you do when you fall down? You get back up. Okay. See, it should be impossible for me to get back up. If you're down, know that God is ready for your prayer. And if it doesn't change your circumstance, know that He's going to pull you through. He has a reason, a plan, a good plan. And He will give you strength to get back up like this. In 1983, Nick's parents were very excited about the most joyous moment of their life, the birth of their son. But they were left speechless when he was born with no arms and no legs. Savior,